There are millions of people in the world living with some form of physical disability. And for many of those people, those disabilities are permanent. And so in the absence of uh, a medical treatment for healing them or curing them, we have to rely on technology that can assist or restore those functions that have been lost to injury or disease. Work in my lab is focused on creating technology that enables humans to interact with machines and other objects in their environment in entirely new ways. Specifically, we're working on technology that communicates directly with our brain and other parts of our nervous system to read signals associated with our intention to move and provide sensory inputs that enable us to feel touch virtually uh, as if it were physical. This is technology that will uh, one day enable amputees to control a robotic prosthesis as if it were their own limb. It will allow people with spinal cord injury and stroke that have become paralyzed to once again be able to walk, reach, and grasp objects in their environment. We've spent the better part of the last decade uh, doing preclinical trials and uh, new technology development, and recently began a first in human study of a technique called spinal cord stimulation to restore sensory feedback to lower limb amputees. This technology will ultimately enable amputees to feel a prosthetic foot as if it were their natural foot. And what we're finding is that by restoring sensation to that missing body part, their abnormal or uncomfortable sensations called phantom limb pain disappear. So we think that restoring sensory feedback will have profound implications not only for an amputee's mobility, uh, but also for their comfort and quality of life. In addition, later this year, we plan to start a new clinical trial of a device aimed at providing people with profound paralysis due to ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease the ability to control a computer or send text messages using thought signals that we measure with a device implanted through blood vessels to record action signals from the brain. And beyond the medical applications of this technology, there are profound applications in the consumer space. For example, in augmented and virtual reality, there is currently very limited ability to provide haptic feedback, which is a vital part of creating an immersive experience for gamers and people performing virtual training in virtual reality simulators. Using technology that connects directly to the nervous system, we can restore that sensory feedback to provide touch and movement sensation that truly feels natural. Knowledge of how information is represented in the nervous system has really guided uh, the engineering side of what we do. And one of the reasons I'm really excited about being at a place like Carnegie Mellon University is that I'm surrounded by engineers and computer scientists that I can work with collaboratively to develop devices that can interface more effectively and more broadly with the nervous system and develop artificial intelligence and machine learning systems that can process the information that we measure and interpret it more effectively. I'm really excited about all of the progress that has been made on the engineering uh, side to create new technologies for interfacing directly with the brain. And I'm most excited about seeing the results of that, those engineering efforts translated into new medical technologies to help not only people with physical disabilities, but mental health conditions as well.